Hi, my sweet queens. Wait, yay. help me. Oh, wait, we can't oh, wait. see you. Oh, yay. yay. Oh, oh, my girl. Aww. It's been so long. I know. Um, wait, like, when is the last time? How old? You were pregnant. Yeah. No way. I the was boys say, are going to be three in to... August. It's been that long. We haven't talked. You know, Instagram messes you up because I feel like Instagram, I see I know everyone. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. And you see, I like, I see you all the time and what you're up to. So I just, I feel like maybe we always see each other, but I guess we haven't. No, I knew we hadn't talked in a while. Because I know I'm having a horrible hair day. So they're like, the computer's like, please shut, shut it off, right. girl. Shut <laughs> oh it off. My, oh, your hair looks good. I feel like. I have like, look, these little braids because I put in fake hair with the bob. And so when I had a shoot the other day, so where it's super short, we'll braid it and pin it. But I've been too lazy to take the braids out. And I'm like, wait, your braids are still in? Yeah, because I knew if I take them out, it'd be full crimp style. And I was like, well, that'd be bad. So it's better to just tuck little braids, you know. <laughs> We're My so son trashy. and I woke up so Wait, trashy. You know, I mean, I feel like a hot mess now all the time. Oh yeah, there's just times I like yesterday I left my house taking the kids to school, and I just I almost didn't care. Like I was in like really big sweats oh, and nice. like I threw my hair in like a messy bun, but I don't even know if I washed my face. And uh, I feel like parents were looking at me like, oh, she had a hard night. Yeah. And you could always I tell at school drop off like who had the rough night or the morning. But the worst part about it is I didn't even have a rough night because of my kids. I had a rough night because Nicole was telling me about the poltergeist and all that. So I actually, so I woke up at, whoa. Ew, you said that and started echoing. I Did mean, you hear the echo? Yeah, like we're definitely going to get. No. <laughs> See, I can't talk about this shit. Because well, I, I woke up at 3 a.m. I, I woke up at 3 a.m. And when I looked at the clock to be like, what time is it? And I saw 3 a.m. I, I started to freak out and I told Nicole I'm like thanks bitch like I haven't thought about that stupid movie forever well I wasn't I was talking about the actress in it but okay but now that echo happened and now I'm like that was kind of weird and so I just stopped. everyone will see, find me at church after you know this yeah we just got to get off the topic okay let's just uh, let's get into it oh my goodness Kelty well you have been so busy it has actually been so much fun to see everything you're doing on social media I have to say, I don't know when you posted this. This was, I mean, I'm going to oh, say. she's been dying to ask. Yeah, I'm going to say months ago, but I feel like it could have been longer, where you were, like, kind of depressed, like you were saying, like you felt like nothing was going on, and you were just a little lost and like, oh, my goodness. And then all of a sudden, look at you now. I mean, host of a new show. You're the e-corn sponsor. I mean, everything. I mean, I feel like I see you in Dubai. I see you in Paris. <laughs> like, I see you everywhere. And I love that you're back with E. Oh, you're in Italy? Yeah. I mean, oh, my God. Oh. Already. Well, Tell thank us. you. I Listen, I think, and and I was, honestly, I was so excited that this, like, I'm almost starting in tears because I'm seeing you girls and I'm so happy. But oh. I, um, I, I. I feel like two things can be true at the same time. And I feel like you guys are a great representation of this as well, which is like, things can be really good. Like I, I am so lucky. I have enough money to pay my mortgage. I have a fam a husband who loves me. Um, I have so many good things. I have great friend group. Like if it, if all the Hollywood mess went away tomorrow, I believe that I would still have an incredibly happy, meaningful life. Unfortunately mm. for me, I'm also like a psycho showgirl who is really in touch with like the outward success. And that is what I thrive on. And I don't know if I wasn't loved enough as a child, but like, <laughs> I just need everyone to like me and I need everyone to like what I'm doing and I need to constantly be successful. And like, that is what fuels me. And so it's been a hard year because um, the show super fan that you're speaking of, like I've been in development and working on the show for over five years. Like we wow. sold it, we sold it right at the start of the pandemic. So it's been oh, that long wow. and it's been such a labor of love. This is something that I created. I'm co-hosting. I'm the executive producer on. And like, I mean, when I, we had our lady gang, we had a show lady gang TV on E and I was executive producer. And I say that in air quotes, but like, I didn't make any decisions. I picked my outfit and I picked like my hair color 
for that for a hairdo but like with super fan it's like the logo the color of the font the set the words that were said the artists that come on the show like every single thing was part of my heart and the show just kept getting pushed it was supposed to be last fall then it was supposed to be after grammys and then it got pushed again because of the writer's strike and so it's just like this is my child i don't have children and i've just been waiting to show the world this and it just kept getting like fucked you know yeah, and right. i was like i'm a good person i work hard and i'm looking around and i feel like it's so easy for everybody else and i'm like where is my like thing like where is my moment yeah. i'm tired yeah. i want my fucking moment <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And here no. you got it. I mean, you've definitely had many moments. I will say, many. I many. know, and that's why I'm such a but dick. This is a, yeah, but this is one I get. Like this moment, you creating something and being patient with it and seeing it now come to life. That's fucking special. Well, and have you filmed some episodes? Because it's done. It's, it's been yeah. done. Okay. Since, yeah. Oh, so you're waiting. So they pushed it just because oh, the yeah, it's going on going air. On. Yeah, finally. it's going on the air finally. finally. Okay, like yes. that. So it's been like locked. We finished the edits, um, you know, probably four or five months ago. So I've just been like sitting, waiting. And and to be honest with you, like I didn't necessarily want to go back to entertainment news. Like when E called me and said, hey, do you want this job? But I was like, I feel like Superfan might never get on the air at this point. And like, we need to work. Like, yes, I have some savings. I can pay my mortgage, but also like, I'm not a Nepo baby. Like I, you know, like yeah. honey needs jobs. So yeah. I was like, well, I'm going to take this job. And then I've been surprised at how much I've enjoyed it. And like, just love being back traveling you the world, interviewing. You yeah. could tell you're having you could, fun. Yeah, you I feel, feel it. it. I feel it in your videos and your fashion and your Thank smile, you, everything. You're, and you're rocking it too. But I, and Thank I always you. feel like, and like especially coming from the EP side of things, that it's always great to do those things because now you're on this incredible platform that's probably going to help push it, even though it's two different networks, but will help push your show. And now you have all the this whole different audience that might not follow you on social tuning in, and now we'll tune in to see super fans. So exactly. I think it's. Also great for that. You guys know the deal. Well. You got to have you 97 know. irons in the fire at all times. I mean, at all times. We're, it's the constant hustle. It's the Green constant Iowa. hustle. Constant. That I know. We always look Hollywood. at each other and we're like, are we ever going to stop hustling? Is, it, is there <laughs> ever a, a stopping point? And it's I like even know. being in the wine industry. Like it's also a hustle and it's, it. I thought maybe that would be a little bit more low key, but no, it's just the Hollywood vibes. And I mean, the thing that's better, that's been better for us is being away from Hollywood because I think you, you're you even more in the hustle because you're just surrounded by it. So that's been the nice like decompressing and disconnect. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I feel you being in a recession, the writer's strike, I'm like, hey, we got to, like, even if they're little basic jobs, like, yeah. I, I got to take them because I have to make sure that lifestyle stays the same yeah. throughout, you know, a certain time. And if shit hits the fan, mommy could still take care of all the shit. And I know. It's, it's a lot, it's a lot like less. It it's is. A lot. I couldn't, I told Bree, I almost had like an anxiety attack last night, but I was just thinking of like, just a lot of things and I started to feel pressure and then all of a sudden I got anxiety and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, I think I'm having an anxiety attack and I had to get up out of bed and I was like downstairs for a few hours just sipping tea, drinking. It was like ginger, orange juice and lemon. Like I was just trying to like get my body like you're fine, doing the breathing stuff. Um, so I get you. You know what I've been doing and I would love to share this with your listeners. Not They're probably like, oh my God, we just like you're such a psycho, but, um, mm -hmm. I've been seeing this doctor out here in LA. His name is Dr. S and he's like, he's like the Gwyneth Paltrow naturopath. And it's like all really bougie and stupid. And my girlfriend, Christina got me in. Um, and it's like a seven year wait list, but I was really sick. I had mono and then I didn't know. And then my liver shut down. And so I've been like uh, getting better. And anyway, I've been going through all this medical stuff at the same time, which is probably why I was so depressed. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, he makes me do this thing called pew, which is, uh, personal emotional writing and every day for 12 minutes, which is like, it is actually so hard to find 12 minutes of silence. I bet you guys can't with your children, but you sit, you make a time on your phone for 12 minutes and then you just stream of consciousness, write everything you hate. It's only negative shit. It's wow. like this stuff like, I hate that this person talks to me like this. I hate that I can't fucking eat a vegetable. I hate my 
whatever the ugliest, most disgusting, terrible things that you say to yourself. And like, I don't even want to repeat the ones I say to me because I don't want to like traumatize anyone or like <laughs> give you any ideas, but you all know right. the horrible things you say to yourself. You're not supposed to hate your body or your face or your life or whatever, but we all right. have those conversations oh, yeah. with ourselves in our head. So all the terrible things about everything that you hate in life, you write it for 12 minutes, just stream of consciousness, everything, everything. And then you fucking take it outside and you burn it. Oh, burn like that paper it. every single day. And I have been doing this consistently for about 11 weeks and I'm not perfect. Like every, some days get busy and I don't do it, but I swear to God, it sounds so stupid. It is such a relief. And you really like, once you burn the thought, it's like that thing, that person that was bugging you that you work with or whatever that thing, like maybe the person stealing your lunch at work or whatever, like it does release. So maybe Ooh. the next time I, you're I drinking your ginger that. tea. Haters, yeah. it's gonna be our haters ball. Yeah, twelve minutes yeah. of the haters ball. Hate, hate, well, hate, and hate. also, I feel like no one gives you permission just to hate shit anymore. We have to be so PC, and we're supposed to be like well adjusted and like compassionate and understanding of everyone. But like sometimes, Maria, the way you spoke to me, I hate, and yeah. I want to write some bad stuff about you down, and then I want to release. It. <laughs> yeah. No, I get, I, and I feel like, especially for women, um, when we say things, people immediately are like, she's bitter, she's this, like, they just, they make it, like, yeah. we just can't say something that fucking bugs us today, yeah. it's like, yes, or that wasn't fucking fair, I'm still allowed to say, like, that was not fair, Yeah, and I'm yes. not being a victim about it, that was not fair, so... Yeah. I get that. I need. I have a long list of stuff. I was gonna I say that twelve right minutes might burn. go fast for me. I know, <laughs> I right? Think I'll be like, wait, I need twelve more. <laughs> now, um, because we didn't get into it, um, for listeners, can yes. you describe to them what Superfan on CBS is? Oh my God! Thank you so much for asking. Um, okay, so my new series, Superfan, is a one-hour primetime musical special. It's a big, shiny floor, musical, spectacular show. And it's really a celebration of the biggest A-list musical icons on the planet. And Ooh. it's done through the lens of their fans. And so basically on every single show, like Shania Twain was my favorite show. I'm sorry to other, everyone oh. else. I love everyone equally. We okay. had Ella Cool J, Pitbull, Kelsey Ballerini, Gloria Stefan, wow. um, Little wow. Big Town. I mean, we got great people. And so five of of their biggest, we searched the whole country, like a crazy search casting. We found their five biggest fans and those fans compete through multiple rounds of like music, trivia, games, knowing them, knowing things that you shouldn't even know about them, being able to know what the pictures are from. Um, they go through all these games and at the end, America actually crowns. We have we don't even know who wins yet. We filmed two endings. America crowns the number one super fan, and that super fan wins like a crazy prize. Like for the Gloria Stefan episode, Gloria's like, My super fan, I'm gonna have you come to Miami. You can stay in one of my two hotels that I own for four days. And then on the Saturday night, I'm gonna pick you up and you're gonna come to my house on Star Island and I'm gonna cook you dinner and we're gonna spend the evening together. Oh my child. <laughs> Yeah. I so, mean, wow. can I it's, compete? <laughs> I know. I'm like, I could have been the Shania Twain super fan. And even Kelsey Ballerini, who's on, she was like, wait, you didn't call me for the Shania episode? Right. Or me. Um, I'm obsessed with her. Yeah. And what's so special about it is that the fans are real super fans. Like we judge the fans in the castings, not only on just did they know the trivia and did they know the music, but also like on their, their sort of like fandom of, you know, these people are like, oh, I, I didn't know English when I came to the United States. I learned English by listening to Shania Twain. Mm. Um, this, there's a sweet woman who had uh, metastatic breast cancer at 28 years old. And she was like, all I did was listen to Shania Twain in treatment. Like you got me through this. There's a, uh, a person for Pitbull. She's like in my eighth grade yearbook, I have this picture and underneath it's like Dolly, like I'm the number one football fan. She was eight years in eighth grade. Like it's just such a crazy, um, it's just a crazy heartfelt thing. And I feel like earth is so hard right now and AI technology is taking over. And I think we're going to like, the world is going to end, but it's just family, <laughs> delicious, wonderful, happy entertainment. 
I love we that we need it because I feel like I've already had some sadness with Ted Lasso being done. And like, I feel like your show gives that same vibes. Like, just feel good, yeah. you know? I want to go to bed feeling happy. Yeah. And, and like, like, smiling and, and I feel just like seeing family. other people happy. Yeah. And, yeah. and be able to sit and watch television with your family. I mean, I rarely do it. I think Dancing with the Stars is the only time I sit with my daughter. But my daughter would love this show. Love. And it's so fun when I can sit with Birdie on the couch because her little mouth and, like, the stuff she'll say and – to see her eyes and it's so fun. It's well, so fun. And for and for me too, it's like I mean, our Bella Army now is called Bonita Army, but I think like we wouldn't be where we're at without them. So I think it's so cool to have a show that you know puts the fans, super fans, on a platform, and that the stars get to come and like honor that and like, hey, this that. is what you guys are gonna get. Like I, th- I just love that so much because. I think all of us wouldn't be where we're at without our fans, right? And so um, that's so cool. When we do this super fan sports spinoff, you better believe Bonita Army is competing and there will be a oh, yes. episode for sure. Like better, that yes. Has to happen. Has, um, has to happen. Has to happen. But yeah, exactly. And I, I just felt like, you know, it, it's – it's, it's not a dirty game. It's a fun game. The stars are very, um, active. Like they're on stage with the fans the whole time. People have been like, are they actually there? I was like, no, no, no. They're there. They're commenting. They're telling stories. You know, it's just, it's very interactive. And I grew up, um, I, you know, I'm married to a music manager, but I grew up like music. I know people are like, music's my life, but like, you know, I was a former dancer. So I've just lived this music life. My first job was hosting the music news for Live Nation like a zillion years ago, like mm, 15 years wow. ago. That's where I met my husband. And and then my first job at CBS was working. Um, I had my own little digital music show and I did the first US interview ever with like Ed Sheeran. Like I oh remember Ed Sheeran. Yeah, like Ed Sheeran was nobody. The A-team song had just broken in the UK and it was this little web show. So I couldn't get a list stars. I could get like, you know, up and comers, you know, at best. And so I remember Ed doing this interview. I actually just watched it. Um, and he's sitting in this room and he's like, he turns to his publicist, Glenn, same publicist as now. And he turns to his publicist. He's like, am I famous here yet? And, and Glenn turns to him and goes, (laughs) we're working on it. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm like, it's Ed Sheeran, the global superstar, I like mean, biggest star in the world. So right. um, I feel like I had a hand in breaking him. I had a hand in breaking Imagine Dragons. I remember them oh, being on the CBS lot. And um, I saw Kevin Frazier, who was hosting Entertainment Tonight. And I was like, you should check out this band. They're about to be the biggest band in the world. And they were like, nobody, nobody knew who they were. But I just loved the music. So for me to host a music show is... I have wanted to be in a band my whole life. I have no talent. I've done all the various things. I've hosted music news. I've slept with a lot of rock stars. I've (laughs) um, like went to a lot of concerts. So like I'm perfect to host this show. Yeah. Yes. You, you are. And you know so much. Really well. And I feel like, you know, you just, in all the work you've done, even in the past few years, like you just know a lot about stars and people in pop culture and like yeah. what's going on. Like you're, yeah, you're so up to date with all that. Well, it's true when they say timing is everything. And it's, I, I'm show, so happy for you. I have now. such a good feeling about this show. Like this is going to be seasons down the road. Oh and I, CBS is such a great place for it because you can tell they're, they want like having Love Island and they're bringing in just those certain, dem- I mean, they even have uh, women of wrestling. Wow. Yeah. Like they, they're just bringing in that demo yeah. of like they're shifting. And so I think this show's perfect for that. And um, they're great. They have, you know, hardcore cable viewers. Yeah. That tune in, which is great. We need the TV people that actually still watch TV. Right. And, and also you guys apps. are like supremely talented, but like there's just a lot of people living in America that have no talent. And I mean that with love. Like, yeah. and I just feel like there needs to be a show for them. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, obviously America's got talent, you know, um, yeah. like you're looking for people that have talent and it's like you are bendy or you can light fire out of your mouth or you're a singer or you're a dancer or like you have an act or your dog is trained really good. Like everything's a about all these singing competitions. Everything's about like having a talent. I wanted a show for people like me that have no talent. Like I, you're just a regular person who just knows my talent is like supporting somebody else. Yeah. (laughs) Like just a normie, (laughs) like let the normies win something good, you know? Honestly. Oh my God, I love that. You need to make a shirt like with normie. Just a normie, like Like just, I have, I just wore, I'm a regular person. I have no talent. Like I was not 
on any well, of you're the teams in high school. Talented. I, was gonna I say, mean, you're... me, yes, but the competitors. Yeah. It's like yeah, the regular right. people that are just like I've just loved, you know. You know yeah. them like your Bonita yeah. Army. It's like just regular people who just like are in this community together and just like that is their talent. Yeah. Right. No. Right. Oh my God, I love it so much. It's just it's it's what the world needs. Like, and did that's... you have a live audience? Yes. Yeah. So the whole oh. audience is filled with super fans. So we shot this during oh gosh, uh, the end of COVID. So the audience was actually way smaller. So if we do get a second season, I want like 5,000 people in the audience, but yeah. um, we actually did. So the way this is actually really cool. So for the way TV is made, I, I wonder if your listeners will enjoy this, but um, okay. So what we did is that even though five super fans compete on the show, we actually have had eight super fans that were cast and came to the show that day thinking they were going to be on the show. So, and they all were together and they all knew only five of them would continue. And so when we do it like Price is Right style, where we're like, Nikki Garcia, come on down. And like, so they, oh my gosh, awesome. the reaction of them actually getting Aww. chosen is like 100% real. Cause that the final audition was at noon that day, the executive their producers went up and met them all and they were like who's on fire today and we picked those five people but the whole audience we opened it up to like Shania's fan base and Pitbull's fan base and said hey we're shooting in Hollywood come on down you know here's 300 tickets everyone can sign up so there were a lot of people that weren't competing that just showed up in costumes or t-shirts or like dressed like LL Cool J it was it was really cool Oh my that God, is, I love that yeah genius. genius you really thought about every little you did. detail and like in those reactions are so priceless. Like that's TV gold when you get like those natural, real reactions. You yeah. you can't produce that. Mm -mm. And that's like when people get, I feel like drawn in the most. Like that's yeah, when I used to love reality when it was like so, and some reality is still like that, but like when it was just so like moments being captured and you're like, we couldn't write this. Like right. that's, yeah. that's that. No, it's so wild. And like, it's, it's so crazy. Like there's this kid in the, um, there's this kid in the LL Cool J episode. He's from Florida. I'm probably not supposed to say this, but I will. Um, he's from Florida. We could always edit it out. No, so. no, no, it's fine. He's from Florida and it was so cool because he was like, you know, we were interviewing everyone and we were doing the castings and like, he was just so passionate. He was like, I've lived my life through the lens of LL Cool J. And like, I just, I love him so much. But he was like, I don't have a lot of things. So like, I don't want you to, you know, because his fandom score of like, I haven't been to 35 concerts. I don't have every piece of merch that's ever existed. I haven't been able to, you know, buy the hats and the books and all those things because this kid's like hard off, you know, um, or hard up. And I just thought it was really sweet, like to have him on the show because he knows everything and is like very in this world and is a super fan, but doesn't have like all the stuff but still has the heart. And like, to me that just, oh my God, when you see him, you just like fall in love with this kid. And you're like, I please hope you win. And if you don't win, I'm going to personally hire LL Cool J to give you like a second prize because like, I just yeah. feel like you really deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What would but you I, guys do I love for your super that, fan? Though. What would be your like prize? Gosh, I mean, oh, well, we, oh, we would fly, we them, would to fly them to wine country. We'd have them do put wine up. tasting. We'd put, put them up them, in a nice course. hotel. But we do wine tasting. We'd probably make Artem cook for them so we could sit <gasps> and talk Ooh. with them. And then, yeah. um, but we would just take them around Napa, do Bonita Bonita stuff. I mean, depending their age, 21 and older, and if they drink, we would have fun in that way and wine taste. Maybe and take them on loose. a nice hike, start the day, a little yoga in the vineyards. Yeah. No yeah, smackdown. No yeah. smackdown. Well, unless oh, they, well, I mean, well, if they, if they, they want to be slammed, I, I would slam them. <laughs> yeah. I would do it. I would body slam if they want it. I mean, dude, I'm in my always next, up for giving that. In my next meeting at CBS, I'll be like, I feel like you guys should green light the sports. I got the first episode ready to go. You do. You know? We'll do oh, it. Honestly. So good. Oh, it it would be so that. good. So good. So mm. much fun. Well, Kelty, uh -huh. we're, this is, every time we talk to you, you're such a joy, but I always feel like I always leave after we talk and you give me some type of energy. So that's your gift, she right? Does. You like, it's I don't know incredible. what it is, but like you answer me up like you make me feel like hearing you I feel like I can do great things I'm like I don't know you give good energy just so you know I love that you know we, I was just talking with my friends yesterday about this like and I was uh, and this is why I think I started crying when we got on a little bit like had a little emotion in my eyes um mm. it's just because there are so few girls girls like yeah. and that is what is so hard about Hollywood 
and that's what's hard about life. Like even in my podcast, Lady Gang, like the th question we get asked the most is like, what do I do about this female friendship? It's way more difficult to navigate females than it is to navigate. Like, you know, when a kid's a douchebag and you know when it's husband material and like you can fool yourself into all those ways, but like, you know, you know, but there's like this yeah. female friendship and this female competitiveness that is out there and it is so difficult. And I feel like you two are such big stars. You've had such epic careers. Everybody knows who you are and you have been nothing but lovely to me, to Lady Gang, now having me on to promote this show, which means so much to me. Like you didn't have to do yeah. that. You could have been a snob and you could have just gotten, you know, all these fancy people because you are that big and have those connections. And yet time and time again, you have helped champion other women. You've helped champion women that were in a lesser position than you. And that is something that really is so rare and oh. I just wanted to thank you like it, it you really are you are in your hearts what your brand says you are and that is actually rare a lot of times people are like oh my brand is like girl power but then like behind the scenes they're you're cutting each other down or being super competitive or like not letting anyone else in the room or at the table with you. And I think you guys really have done such a beautiful job and have been such an inspiration to me as to when the other female podcast came up and like me thinking twice about maybe I should help this person out or have this person on my show now that Aww. I have success. So it just means a lot. You really are Aww. such special, special women. And, um, and what you've created is, is so special. So I'm, I'm really honored to be here and, you know, ladies out there just surround yourself with, you know, Garcia's. Yeah. Oh, Kelty. It makes me want to cry. I know that was, that meant a lot. You have it no does. idea. It means so much. Cause like you said, the world us three are in, it's sometimes hard to figure out like the good ones and the bad ones. And we all go through the hustle constantly so it's it, nice it, when women can support yeah. each other we can all make each other feel good because that's what life's about right i know and i can't wait till we're at this point in life and and it's going to be so we have such a long way as women but like when we get come together and truly build each other up it is crazy what women can do they they conquer things i mean right? we've been in an industry where we're able to break barriers but i felt like there was still so much more we could do if we, if we stayed like this and Hollywood happens or life happens and people get a taste of success and that's when you see it breaking. And I'm always like, damn, as women, we truly can conquer this right. world and we could change it so much for the be better. And so that's why mother nature is a mother. And so mm. one day, you know, it's like we just, it's, yeah. And if not, we keep our nice we little bubble. And we that's what positive. Brie, and, and that's what Brie and I have done and especially like getting closer to 40 and, going into Garcia and leaving Bella and it was so difficult to do and such, I mean, such a difficult decision, but that's where we felt more like you have to be more in that place, fully walk your talk. And that's like what we're just yeah. continuing to do. I agree. Well, you have definitely walked your talk, which is so cool. So we're so excited to see super fan on CBS. And before we end our episode, we always love leaving our listeners with a little inspiration and affirmation. Yeah. So do you have a little quote, mantra, anything you can leave them with? Yes. I love this so much. Um, okay. So my quote is the form of a tweet from Mindy Kaling. She wrote it in 2014. I have it printed out on my wall and her quote said, why the F not me should be your motto. And uh, Mindy, I just love her. And so it's not very high level, but I do feel this deep in my soul of like, why the F not me should be your motto. So if you're listening and you're waiting for your lover to pick you, to marry you, to want to have a baby with you, to want to have a house with you, if you're waiting for your uh, job to promote you, to get you that raise to get that position. If you're waiting for your family to show up for you in a way that, you know, you shouldn't have to be begging. You shouldn't have to be groveling. You should walk in there with your head held high and the confidence that like good things have to happen to someone and why the F not me should be your motto. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Yes. I love that. That's I'm, a good one. 
It Yay. is. That's a really good one. And I, you're the first one who's ever done like something in form of a tweet. I love yeah. that. I love that. People what do a put good shit out there. I still yeah. love Twitter. I love Twitter. And on Superfan, I had right. such a huge fight with the network because they wanted to use like a scan code. And I was like, yeah. no, but if people use a scan code to vote, then no one sees who else other people are voting for. So I fought so hard on Twitter. And so we're doing America votes on Twitter. So it'll be like, um, like hashtag, it'll be like hashtag Superfan Brie, hashtag Superfan Nikki, like who you want to vote for at the end you have yeah, like the six yeah. minutes to vote and during this year i've been waiting for the show to go on elon bought twitter twitter shutting down i'm just sitting here like having a oh, TV every week being like we've already edited the show the graphics are made is twitter gonna exist on august 9th i think we're good but i'm <laughs> back into twitter because i actually love twitter i think it's great you find great things like this mindy kaling tweet 100 exactly. <laughs> and i think voting like twitter is a good place to vote too I like Twitter hashtag no, easy right. simple get it done. No, I, I like that. That's I'm a big fan of Drag Race, RuPaul's Drag Race. It's actually uh, Friday when we're recording this, which is Drag Race night, which is like all I care about. Um, and he <laughs> does all of his uh, RuPaul does all of their show like lives on Twitter, and you're like can talk to the community and be like, no, no, this is why this person should win. And I just like love that because I just need friends, but I don't want to leave my house. So yeah. it's a perfect way to like be in a community without having to like go anywhere. So totally. Oh my there god, I love go. that. I need a. I'll like see clips and stuff on Twitter and I'm always like, I need to watch the show because it looks so entertaining. You and guys so. would be amazing. Call your agents right now. I need you on secret celebrity drag race. Have you heard of this? Oh no. yeah. Have you been offered? Okay. Secret because celebrity AJ, AJ did it. Yes. Um, yes. I've, Secret I've Celebrity saw. Drag Race is one of the best shows on television. They take you, whether you're male, female, straight, whatever you are, and they turn you into a drag queen, And but no one knows who it is because you're so draggy. And then you compete like a regular person. And then until you get kicked off, you don't reveal who you are. It's like Mass Singer, but in drag. And it is so amazing. Yeah. And I feel like y'all would crush. So, yeah. and we need you back on that. I mean, you've been hosting, you're busy, you're drinking wine. I totally get it. But- I do feel like we haven't seen you compete in a memento and that would yeah. be, that would actually that be, would good. be so fun. I, I wanted, I think it was years ago. I was trying to like tell my team, push me as like a guest judge. I think there was like opportunity yeah. for that. There's always guest judges. And yeah. Yeah. But that would be fun. That would be, be really a, fun. Yeah. I would do that. And the I'd secrets you will learn about under eye concealer. Ooh, like, oh, I just want to get in know. there. Like, what are we doing, girls, to like get that right. under eyes so yes. white? Honestly, I know. I know. And the baking, I'm not good at baking. It always I looks just, terrible. I don't get any of it. When you put you you leave the powder on as you finish everything else, so it oh. doesn't keep in your eyes. Or I'm wrinkles. just awful at all of that. I uh, me too. Oh. It's so bad. Yeah. Well, Kelty, oh. this was such a treat. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And when we're in LA, we all need to get together. I know. We always say it, but we really should try. Yeah. Like, for even if hard... it's a coffee, a lunch, something. I know. Also, you guys need to come to E and see me, too. Bring some oh, wine. Yes. Bring some we're wine. S- come into the studio. Yeah. Let's drink some wine Let's do that. and have a little kiki, too. So, yeah. I would love, I love that. that. And thank you again for supporting. I'm so excited <laughs> to see everyone watch Superfan August 9th. Um, at 9 p.m., we come on right after Big Brother. So I know everyone's already watching Big Brother. And um, you can follow at SuperfanCBS on Twitter and Instagram and see all the, like, cool stuff behind the scenes. And we're going to be doing giveaways for, like, fan merch and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm excited. Yay. And we also want to join in. Have you posted yet the um, the dance? Yes. Did you pause that? Oh, we you did. We paused it. We, so we were going to air okay. and- <laughs> We were going to air and then we got pushed because of the writer's strike. So I'm, we're picking it up in two weeks okay. again. So I will nice. text y'all and text be like, us. bitches make the dance. I actually just saw Shania Twain last week. Um, I was interviewing her at the Hollywood Bowl and I made her do the dance with me, which is Yay, so cute. Yes. And we got Pitbull's backup dancers to do it. I'm going to see LL on the Wednesday. I'm going to have him do it. So it's going to be cool. I think it can be a thing. Oh, I oh, yes. agree. Oh my sure. gosh. Well, everyone tune in. And again, Kelty, thank you so much for stopping by. Love you guys. Have a good day. Have a love good you. weekend. I love you so much. You're good people. Oh, bye. bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye, girls. Bye. Bye, oh, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. Taylor, bye. I'm still having a menti B. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's so sweet. So-